I became an environmental activist because I'm very concerned about pollution and the impacts in our world. Toxic chemicals are contaminating our waterways, other ecosystems, our bodies, our food supply, and I want to end that chemical trespass. Um, I want to end the suffering that it causes. I don't want people to be exposed to things that cause cancer and birth defects and other health problems. I don't want the farm worker families that I worked with for 10 years to keep being experiencing these acute poisonings, children included, from pesticides that we don't need to be using. And one of the things that I have learned from the 30 years I've been doing this is that my sentiments are not unusual. Most people want environmental justice. They don't want the world to be going through what it's going through. Um, and millions of people are fighting for sane environmental policies. But the other big thing I've learned, unfortunately, is that all that caring, all that hard work that I've been doing, that other people are doing, that that's really going to be for naught um, unless and until we acknowledge that we cannot win under this economic system. We simply can't win. We're not winning. Well, I think a lot of us who are fighting for environmental protections, we keep trying to persuade ourselves that incremental victories here and there are adding up to overall progress. But when you actually stop and look at things, it's very clear that that's not true. So, for example, we can finally win a ban on a really nasty class of chemicals after a couple decades of hard fighting. But by the time we've won that, another class, two or three classes of chemicals have been introduced and are contaminating our planet. So the one constant is that the chemical corporations keep getting bigger and, and, and wealthier. And um, if you look at global warming, uh, people have celebrated that we now have a president that acknowledges that climate change is real and we should do something. But what's the actual record of that president? We've had a, a, a skyrocketing of fossil fuel production under the Obama administration because President Obama has encouraged that. So we're losing on global warming. And if you, if you look at the 90 goals set by the nations of the world at the Earth Summit in the 1990s, We've made progress on four of those. We're losing ground on 86. <laughs> and that's because, basically, we can't get what we need under capitalism. All right. How did you get to that perspective? In other words, let me, let me spell it out very briefly. For many years in this country, people who became active on something that mattered intensely to them, the way you have around ecological or environmental, but people who, for example, were concerned about racial inequality or discrimination, people who were w worried about or concerned about gender discrimination against women, and a whole host of They have, in general, until recently, felt that it was very important to keep narrowly focused on whatever got them going and not to raise the bigger economic questions. You're really going in a different way. Mm -hmm. you, you, in a sense, have concluded that there's no way to keep going <clears throat> without doing. Can you tell us a little bit about right. how you got to that? Right. I want to talk in a, a little bit about the dynamic in the environmental movement and how that shapes Good. things. But first, let me just say that, you know, I went into the work and I and I kept fighting for you know better rules and and laws and enforcement of things. And you know, when I finally realized it wasn't adding up to overall progress. It was a pretty quick step to realize, you know, this system is rigged against us because we were doing everything you're supposed to do, and we couldn't put in place things that the vast majority of people want, and that was happening everywhere. So I started to try to figure out, wow, how, how come the system is, is, is stacked against us? And my first instinct was, oh, it's that big money is buying elections. So I actually helped form a campaign finance reform group and thought, well, we'll get money out of elections, and then we'll be able to get the environmental reforms w we want. But as I kept fighting in the trenches, I started realizing, you know, money in elections ain't the half of it. We're, I mean, it's hardly anything that we're dealing with. We're dealing with this reality where the chemical corporations have their tentacles in everything, and public discourse is basically, basically completely distorted. So if I could give some examples. For, for instance, Every year, thousands of scientific studies are published that are funded by the chemical industry. And guess what? They always exonerate the toxic products. Meanwhile, independent research is rarer and rarer, and independent scientists find it hard to do the research because the chemical industry stymies them. So if you want to study, for example, what's the impact of genetically modified agriculture? You have to get 
the GMO seeds from the chemical corporations and their permission to do the research and they won't grant it. If you're a scientist or anybody and you start making statements or publishing findings that could threaten corporate profits, you're taken down. And I write about all this stuff in the, in the, in the book. book. You're taken down by smear campaigns, by other attacks. And these are generally led by organizations and experts that seem like they're independent and they're speaking out of the public interest, but they're really on the corporate payroll. So all this stuff is happening. Education, you know, K through 12 education, it's flooded with uh, money from Exxon and DuPont and Dow for curricula and things like that. Uh, the university situation is even worse. I could tell you about Dow and its cozy relationship with my alma mater. Um, the news media, y you know, basically the truth is that I started to realize is that the chemical corporations pollute every aspect <laughs> of every realm that feeds into how we make decisions. So there's this insane script that's being followed where people aren't at the table, the corporations are pulling, pulling the strings. And, you know, as I gradually stepped back and looked at that big picture and wrote what it will take, I realized this isn't an anomaly. It's on all the issues, all justice and survival issues. And I realized that um, it's not an accident. It's how capitalism works because the major industries are privately owned and privately operated for profit, even though they're making decisions that are determining the fate of humanity. Mm -hmm. Moreover, they can, uh, so we're just supposed to try to steer things from outside, and we can't. Uh, we're subject to extortion because jobs are controlled by those few corporations and individuals. The money that workers produce, that's not ending up in our coffers for the environmental programs we want. And the real kicker, which you talk about all the time on the program, is that money's going to the 1%. Mm -hmm. So the corporations and their owners have that money, and they use it to subvert science, education, they have smear campaigns, spies. So the whole system is polluted because our economic system sets it up that way. And, you know, I'm in this work for the justice. I'm also in it because I don't think we're going to survive as a species. And we have to, we have to look at why if we want our children to have a future.